Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story, boss wants to cancel all services. The second story, Karen is running late for her flight, so I make her extra late. The third story, director lost clients after my demotion. The first story is, I want to cancel all of my services. Okay. I had worked at a telecommunications store for quite a few years, and as someone who's worked in all sorts of retail, I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt that telco has the worst customers, but every now and then you get back at the worst by giving them exactly what they want. We had a local small business owner that had several services with us. Mobile phones, broadband, landlines, the works. He thought that since he had a lot of services, it meant that he could do what he wanted and the rules did not apply to him. This included getting behind on his bills, complaining about late fees, and absolutely losing it if any services were suspended or restricted. Bear in mind that this only happens after three months of overdue bills. If any of these were to happen, he would stomp in, yell and carry on. Now in a lot of telco stores, we're just that, stores. We can only do very little when it comes to accounts, especially business accounts. I know it's ridiculous, and if we had the capabilities to do even a few account things in store, it would have made so many people's lives easier. So we would process a payment and then call up the accounts department to reinstate the services or unrestrict them. One week in particular, he came in all smiles and shaking hands. He didn't even mind waiting in line for the people in before him to be served. Normally he would storm up to any consultant, even if they were with customers already being served. I had the luck of being the first one free to serve him. He goes on a long speech about how he's expanding his business and needs several new phones for new staff he's hiring. I congratulate him and go about the process of getting them activated. We hit a problem early on. Surprise, surprise, he has overdue bills and the system cannot apply new services to an account that's overdue. This does not mean a bill has been issued, it means that it's past its due date. He's livid, saying he needs those services. I get on the phone with the accounts team and they're willing to waive the default wait time of three business days after an account is settled before applying new services. He wasn't having a bar of it and said he wants the services and will not be paying a cent today. I inform him that it simply cannot be done, literally impossible in our system to do it. He starts yelling, saying that he wants to cancel his services and take them elsewhere. I tell him that it's not something we can do in store and he will need to contact the business accounts department and they can assist him in moving his service elsewhere. He stomps off and I thought this would be the end of it. Oh, how wrong I was. The very next day, as soon as the store opens, he's there waiting, red-faced and on the warpath. Being the most senior person during the shift, I deal with him. He yells about being on the phone for ages, being told they advise not to cancel, but to go to another telco and port his services. I'm guessing they didn't explain it too well, as porting means to transfer your services to another provider, keeping the same numbers, and having minimal, if any, interruption of service. I explained to him very plainly about what porting meant and that he only needed to do was go to another carrier, sign up his services, give them the numbers he once brought across, and once they do, we automatically cancel his services on our end, once the other provider takes ownership. Simple, right? Wrong. He refused to leave the store until his services were cancelled. Time for my malicious compliance. While it wasn't something we could do in store, we had manual paperwork for lots of things, in case of systems going down, compatibility issues, etc. So I go through our internal server, to find manual paperwork for account and service cancellations and print it off, filling everything out on it ready to go. I request two forms of ID, which I need to photocopy, that needs to be attached to the paperwork and get him to sign, informing him in no uncertain terms that if he goes ahead with this, his services will be deactivated within two business days and will no longer function. He was fine with this, saying once that happened he would go elsewhere. He signed and I went about contacting accounts, faxing, Yes, faxing the paperwork through, and they processed it all and forwarded me the confirmation for our in-store records. Two days later. I once again open the store and he's there waiting, red-faced, and the second he sees me starts screaming at me that none of his services are working and his company cannot get anything done. No phones, no internet, etc. And that he's going to sue us for lost income and everything else. I go out the back and pull out the paperwork, going over it with him, going over what I told him the other day. He no longer has any services with us. They're now cancelled and he will be unable to sign up on any new services or potentially reactivate any services until his overdue account is paid. 
I take him to a computer and try to access his account, showing him it no longer exists on our end, and there's literally nothing I can do. He gets up angry but defeated, and leaves, yelling we've now lost a big customer. Hadn't we already? Epilogue. I talked to a friend of mine who worked at a different telco, who ended up dealing with the business owner. Due to his services being cancelled, they were unable to port slash transfer his numbers across, since they now didn't exist, and to sign up a broadband service could take up to 10 business days to have activated. His business was essentially shut down for two weeks, and having to give new numbers to everyone associated with his business, because he didn't want to pay his bills, and didn't want to listen about porting. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. The second story is, you want to try and belittle me? I'll make you late for your precious flight. I work for a contracting company in Pennsylvania. I work as a traffic controller, meaning I'm the guy that sets up the traffic cones and signs at construction sites, as well as hold the sign with stop and slow on either side. As you can guess, because I'm sure some of you do just a little bit, people hate me when I'm at work. I get constant remarks and comments thrown at me, simply because I inconvenience people a few minutes on their commute. But I don't give an SH because I'm making sure the workers, my co-workers, and the drivers are all safe, and no one gets hurt or killed. I also don't give an SH about what people say about me, as I have pretty thick skin. So one day I'm working a job with four other traffic controllers. Usually it's only two, me and someone else, but we were on a busy interaction, so we needed more people. I was at the top of a hill, which flowed into a huge S-bend before the intersection. I was there to make sure that people slowed down before the bend, to avoid them blowing past or hitting my coworker at the bottom. I was to only stop traffic when I was radioed to. This was only for the few minutes the work trucks were moving out of the work zone. Things were going smoothly at first. Eventually, I got the call to hold traffic. So I flip my sign to stop, and traffic comes to a stop perfectly fine. Then I hear it. A few cars down the line, a woman is blaring her horn non-stop and screaming out the window of her Mercedes. This Karen is just wailing that I stopped everyone. She eventually gets out of her car and comes stomping up to me. Now, I can't leave my post. However, I was fully prepared to whack this bee with my sign if needed. She finally reaches me and says this, K is Karen, M is me. K, what the F are you doing? Me, I'm holding the traffic, ma'am. K, let us through, I have to be at the airport. Me, I'm sorry, ma'am, but we have workers moving down there. You're just gonna have to wait. K, this is effing ridiculous. Just tell them to move. I have to go. Yes, that exaggerated. Me, I'm sorry. She cuts me off. K, Listen, you heroin-addicted good-for-nothing slime ball. Get the F out of my way and do your effing job. She storms back to her car. Again, I have thick skin, so I didn't care about the comment. However, I am so not against some good old malicious compliance. She wants me to do my job? Well, alrighty then. I get the call to let traffic through and begin to do so. I noticed the two cars that were behind Karen had turned off into side roads, so she was the last one in line. Oh, perfect, I think to myself. I radio down to guy at the bottom of the hill and tell him I'll be holding traffic for a bit. By law in PA, I can hold traffic for 15 minutes, so I decided to use that to get some malicious compliance on Karen. I let the car in front of her go and stop her. She starts back up again. K, what the F are you doing? Me, sorry ma'am, there's an obstruction in the road. You'll need to wait till it's moved. What was the obstruction you ask? Well, it was my lunchbox that I threw into the middle of the road after stopping her. She went off for 15 minutes on me, about how she's going to miss her flight, and how I'm a dirty convict. 15 minutes goes by, and I move my lunchbox and let her through. Thankfully, only one other car came by in that time, and it turned off into a driveway, so I wasn't inconveniencing an innocent here. She pulls up and yells at me, and asks, What the F were you doing, you SH head? I reply with a very snarky, Just doing my job, ma'am. She drives away in a huff. When we finished up, the others asked what I was doing, and I told them what happened. They thought it was the funniest SH they'd heard that week. I don't know if she was late for her flight, but I hope she was. Moral of the story, kids, don't F with traffic controllers. We can F up your day more than you think. And the last story is, I got demoted because I talked too fast. This was a couple years ago, 2014. I was in college working for a pretty well-known retail clothing store. Let's call it Perpetually 21. P21. I started as a floor associate but pretty quickly moved up to a cash wrap associate and eventually ended up being a cash wrap lead. This means you're in charge of the register area counting money, approving discounts and line deletes. A line delete is when one of your cashiers accidentally scans an item twice or scans the wrong one and you or a manager have to be called over to input a code to remove the item. And you must do this every time for each line. 
It got annoying at times, especially with new hires, but it was my job so I dealt with it. Anyways, P21 is a corporate-ran company, so every couple months a district manager, DM, would come in and evaluate the store. Our DM took her job way too seriously and tended to forget that the majority of her employees were high school and college age kids, just trying to make money. She would also pull a floor associate to be her personal shopper when she would come visit, which all of us dreaded. After one of her shopping sprees, she came up to the register and I was the one checking her out. We exchanged pleasantries, had normal conversation, and she left with her purchases. I didn't think much of it until later on during my shift when my associate manager, AM, pulled me aside and this conversation happened. AM, hey, OP, DM wants me to pull off cash wrap, I'm sorry. Me, what, why? AM, she said you talked too fast during your checkout and she felt rushed. Me, oh, well, okay then, whatever. So do you want me to go to the floor then? AM, no, we're short on cashiers so I'll need you up front, but I have to take down your clearance code. So, I'm pretty bummed, but it's not like I was getting more pay at being in one position or the other. Trying to get a raise there was trash. We start to get a little busy, and this particular P21 is massive. The building used to be a department store. So, to communicate with other employees in other sections of the store, we use walkie-talkies. So, I call up some extra help over the walkie, and they send over two new hires, NH1 and 2. A couple hours into my shift, this happens. NH1, hey, OP, I made a mistake, can you delete my line? Me, actually I can't. DM took away my clearance this morning, so my code won't work. You'll have to call AM. So they call over AM, but for those of you who work in retail, know that managers never come immediately when called. NH is just staring apologetically at the customer, because all we can do is wait. 10 minutes pass. NH2, uh, OP, I made a mistake. Can you delete this line? Me, nope, you gotta call over AM again, sorry. We now have two out of three registers at a standstill and a line forming. I have NH1 take over my register and go look for AM. Turns out that AM was in a meeting with DM in the office and they had their walkies off. Knock knock, me, hi sorry to bother but we need a line deleted the register. DM, looking annoyed that I interrupted their meeting, why can't you do it, do I have to do everything? AM, um you had me take away their codes this morning. Phone rings, AM jumps to answer it to avoid awkwardness. DM, oh right, well I'll go deal with that real quick and come back. So we walk back to the registers and there's now a large line. One of the new hires, bless their poor soul, got a customer who was making a return, which yes, you need special clearance to approve. Customers are furious. One comes up to me and asks to speak to a manager and I kindly direct her to my DM. I'm trying to suppress a smile as she's getting chewed out by this lady for insufficiency and long wait times and that she'll be hearing about this on Yelp, which DMs hate because then regional managers can hear about it too. After the rush, I clock out and go to buy some stuff I had on hold, which I deliberately waited to do till my DM had already left the registers, just so they could call her back over the walkie to approve my employee purchase. The look of pure disdain for me when she has to walk back made it totally worth it. All this could have been avoided if she didn't demote me because she felt rushed during our transaction, which is usually what customers want. I quit a couple months later. The whole store got shut down a year later too. So glad I don't work in retail anymore. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to watch more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.